everyone, Miss Dowling here. I'm all comfy and I'm ready to read some Because of Mr. Turrups. I hope that you got a chance to tune in yesterday. We read about three chapters from Because of Mr. Turrupt. We were able to summarize what we've read throughout the year so we can um, catch, whether you're sitting with a family member right now, catch them up on what we've been reading throughout the year in this story. So we're gonna get right to it and continue reading. And I hope you enjoy. If you have your books with you, please turn to page 254. Look at not too much left, everyone. The per perspective for today is Luke. And a reminder that Luke is the brain. Mrs. Williams spoke up. Boys and girls, I do have an announcement before I leave you with your teacher. Remember, yesterday we read that Mr. Turrup's back, he came and he walked right into the classroom and surprised everyone. She smiled. The school board has decided that next year will be an experimental year. We're going to try looping in one classroom. What's that? Anna asked. Looping is when a class and the teacher move on to the next grade together, Mrs. Williams said. It got quiet fast, real quiet. Hold your breath, quiet. Was everybody wondering the same thing? I looked around. Jessica smiled and nodded at me. Boys and girls, next year your class will be looping, Mrs. Williams said. With Mr. Turrupt, Anna asked. Yes, Mr. Turrupt answered. We jumped and screamed and hooted and hollered. I saw Mrs. Williams heading towards the door. I ran over to her. Mrs. Williams, I said as she was about to leave. She turned around. Yes, Luke? Thank you, I said. Then I felt a sudden quietness behind me. The rest of my class stopped and took notice of Mrs. Williams. Thank you, Mrs. Williams, voices called. She looked at Mr. Turrupt. I was, a, I was close enough to hear her say, there's magic in this room with you here, Mr. Turrupt. Magic. She hugged him and left. Wow, a lot of us boys and girls, I remember in class, some of you predicted that they would have another chance with Mr. Turrupt. And here it is. Our prediction came true. Next chapter is from the point of view or the perspective of Alexia. Teach made it. He like showed up on the last day with no warning. It was the biggest surprise ever. Everyone ran over and hugged. Then Teach went over and hugged Peter. I liked Teach so much when he did that. It made me think of the day he took me out in the hallway. Teach knew how to be nice. He didn't like say one thing and do another, not teach. After things calmed down, I went up to him. I've like been being nice now, teach, I said. You'd be proud. You've always been nice, Lex, he said. You've just figured out how to show it. But you're right, I'm very proud of you. I can't wait till next year, I said. I can't wait either, I missed you. Then I hugged Teach again. I love you, Teach, I said. I love you too. So now it's like, wait till next year, and I can't. The next perspective is from the point of view of Jeffrey, the slacker. Sometimes school can actually be great, and next year is going to be just that, because Turrup's back. I didn't think he was going to make it. I thought he was going to die, like Michael did. Remember, everyone, Jeffrey had a brother named Michael who passed away. And so that's kind of his connection to all of this. I tried to help Michael, and it didn't work. I don't know if I helped Turrup at all, but he made it. 
I ran and got help when he fell down in the snow. I ran inside and got the nurse and made them call 911 and got Mrs. Williams. I did that. Was that enough? I watched her up hug Peter. He didn't blame anyone. Jessica told me that it wasn't my fault that Michael died. Maybe you just don't, maybe you just do the best you can, because you can't control what happens in the end. I guess it's okay to hope for things. Sometimes it works out. Slowly, I'm getting my mom and dad back. There isn't silence between us anymore, though they still don't talk to each other very much. Mom is out of her pajamas, but never out of the house. That's okay for now. She's starting to try to get better, like me and dad. I hope things get better between them. I miss my brother, but I'm real glad we got Turret back. And I think I've found some reason for all of this. I never would have been the one to break the silence between me and mom and me and dad if it weren't for Turret's accident. I wanted so bad to tell him how much I loved him, and I didn't know if I was going to get the chance when he was in the coma. And that was when I knew I didn't want to miss the chance with my parents. So I broke the silence. I'm glad too. I'm happy. Anna. The last day turned out to be a great day. Mr. Tura made it. I've never felt so happy. My throat, my heart, my belly, they all burned with happiness probably relief too. And then we found out about this looping thing, and I felt the good hurt inside all over again. Bus 9, bus 9 is now loading. The call came over the speakers. See you soon, Mr. Turrupt, I said. I ran over and gave him a quick hug. Have a good summer. You too, Anna, he said. And Mr. Turrup? I looked up at him, and he looked down at me. I think Ms. Newberry might have the hots for you, in case you're interested, I smiled. Oh, Anna. He smiled back. Matchmaker Anna, thanks for the tip. Bus 9, last call for bus 9, the loudspeaker announced. I hurried out of room 202 with my head held high. I never made it to bus 9, though. I got downstairs to the lobby and ran into Mom and Charlie. Hey, kiddo, Charlie said. Hi, guys, I said. Are you here to pick up Danielle, too? She's still upstairs. I barely got those words out of my mouth before I saw the answer to my question. Danielle's mother walked into the lobby. She spotted us right away. Hi, Mrs. Roberts, I said, finding no small amount of courage. Would you like me to go upstairs and get Danielle for you? Not needed. Danielle came through the stairwell door and entered the lobby. She took a second to look at everyone. Then she and I exchanged a knowing glance, bracing ourselves for whatever came next. There would be no disappointments on this day. It was a day of happiness and celebration. Hi, Mrs. Roberts, Mom said, offering her hand to shake. I'm Terry Adams, and this is my daughter, Anna. We didn't meet properly at the hospital. We'd love to have you and Danielle come over this afternoon, maybe for a cup of coffee or tea, and some hangout time for the girls. The ball lay in Mrs. Roberts' court now. I let my breath out when I saw her shake my mom's hand. This is a big deal, everyone in the class. We know, we predicted this might happen. They all might unite back together. Please call me Susan, she said. Danielle and I would be happy to come over. She glanced at Danielle, who nodded excitedly, but without hiding the shock on her face. Then Mrs. Roberts looked at Charlie. Mr. Turrup came into the lobby at some point during all of this and gave Danielle and me a thumbs up sign. It was as if he knew the whole story. We waved goodbye to the best teacher in the whole wide world. All right, everyone, that's it for today. We are now on page 263. Let's see. One, two, three, four.
<gasps> oh no. We only have about five pages left. So tomorrow will be the grand finale, but don't forget we're going right into the second book, which is called a sequel. And that will probably start at the end of the week with the pace that we're going. So tune in tomorrow for our next section of our read aloud for Because of Mr. Interrupt. I hope you have a great day today. It's supposed to be pretty nice out. Maybe you can get outside for a walk. I think I'm going to take a run later. I've been inside a lot, so I think some fresh air would be good. All right, everyone. I miss you, and I hope that you have a great afternoon.